it's been interesting seeing Letterbox popularity grow and grow and rise and rise as the years pass by. The app is used by the casual moviegoer to the hardcore cinephile, and I feel that even people who are not even into movies know about Letterbox and then therefore download Letterboxd, and then they end up loving movies or not. Letterboxd stays with the same style, but it's also been progressing over the years, updates and updates. And I'm here to talk about new features I'd like to see in 2024, but not just me, the entire Letterboxd community. I planned on this video idea in early December last year, and then I think this is the perfect time to record it and post it because Letterboxd is going to allow users to log in TV shows now. And I'm going to talk about how I feel about that, but that's towards the end of the video. It's gonna be pretty brief. The two features I really love that they recently dropped is changing posters. I'll be honest, some of the posters of some movies are just ugly. There's no nicer way to say it. It adapts the same formula. I feel like Marvel started that formula and then every other single movie has adapted to it and they still haven't let it go even though audiences haven't been responding well to them. For example, the Mission Impossible one, I just changed it to Tom Cruise jumping off the motorcycle. That's a better poster than this one. And the second feature that they just added is show times. So when you go onto a film on Letterboxd, it shows you where you can watch it, but now it can show you if it's a recent release, what movie theaters close by you are playing it. I tried this out with Poor Things and the closest movie theaters popped up. I mean, sure, yeah, you can Google it and see where the closest theaters are, but now having this app that is made for movie lovers, it's great adding these features in that makes sense. So let's first get to the first feature that everyone is asking for, and they even asked this before asking for TV films to be included. And that is changing the header. Hi, I just wanna pop in and say that I kept using the word header instead of backdrop, even though all these comments I screenshotted literally said backdrop, but the deed is done and I'm not gonna go back and refilm it. I think header sounds the same as backdrop, you get the point. I sincerely apologize, it's angering me right now. In your top four faves, your first movie has a header if you're a patron. And this one I definitely back up and love and I feel is the first priority because it's the same as the posters. Some of the headers just aren't that good. And what I mean by this, the film should be summarized and captured in that one photo that's in your header. So basically, a picture's worth a thousand words. And in that main point, the options of the photos for your header should be important scenes from the film. Not spoilers, but enough to, for example, capture someone to watch a film or be curious about a film. I think if you add in choosing which backdrop to use, then definitely you're going to get a lot of people to subscribe to Patreon. It's going to bring you in a lot of more moolah. We're actually going to go on my letterbox right now and let me show you a couple of examples. We're going to go through some headers. So my first one, I have the holdovers on here. I think this is a good picture. I'd love to choose other ones. I love this because it's a sweet moment that all three of them are getting closer and building this kind of eccentric friendship. Other options I'd like to choose would be Angus and Paul standing when all the other boys are leaving and he's the only one left behind. I would love if one of the choices would be the Cherry's Jubilee scene. It's my favorite scene of the whole film. So let's go through a couple. Let's see, Wonka. See, I don't think this is a good header in my opinion because it's just a picture of Timothy Chalamet's Wonka. We know this. What would be nice would be him and Noodle escaping from the zoo and going on top of the ceiling, having that musical number where they're floating with the balloons. Let's see the Iron Claw. This is a great photo. It does sum up the Iron Claw. Other ones would be of the brothers, not of them posing, though I do love this photo. I would have loved another one of another scene of the four brothers together. My internet is so slow. Uh, oh, Spider-Verse. I don't like this one. I feel like a better option would be him and Gwen Stacy sitting upside down viewing the whole world. Check out Barbie. This is a nice one. I love this. You have all the other Barbies in the background. You have the Kens there, dance number and everything, Barbie in the center. Curious to see what smile header is. This one's okay. If anything, the creepy girl in the trailer that you see firsthand, that would be a nice one as the header option. Or, or that creepy guy. One more. <gasps> What's theater camps? This is a great one. The backs of Molly Gordon and Ben Platt and then all those kids that make up theater camp, all of them together. This is a great header. Okay, two ideas that I have. Another feature is removing or changing the stars rating without having to log in a film. When you just rate a film without logging it in, so it won't appear in your recent activity because you can just press the space. You don't have to necessarily write a review. You can delete that entry, but the rating still lives. And once you already rate 
a film, you can't unrate it. And I feel like it'd be better because you're constantly changing your mind. Some opinions are set in stone, others are not. I would really love the option to go through my entire film catalog with all the 700 films I have logged in and completely wipe out all the ratings. Another one I have, and I haven't seen people mention this, is having more than four favorites. I get that that is the iconic thing Letterbox has done and now they brought it to the red carpet and have celebrities be involved in it and saying their four favorites, but I think it should range from five favorites maybe eight favorites, double the fours, or 10 in total. I will not pass 10, cause like top 10. Okay, let's go through these. So this one says, new feature idea, adding directors, writers, actors, etc., to watch lists, allow for notifications anytime they're making something new. This is really nice. Let's say you take a social media break. You don't wanna be on social media. Unfortunately, everything is on social media, every announcement, even important announcements because the news has gotten on there. It'd be nice to have this option on Letterboxd Letterboxd isn't exactly social media. And that's why I'm against DMs on Letterboxd. I feel Instagram already has that and even on letterbox you can link your social media so there you can find someone and communicate with them i feel like letterbox is going to get too rowdy if they have the dms feature on there next one says please bring the feature to reply to members in the comments sections with notifications this is interesting because do you only get notifications when someone likes your review huh i was not aware of that next one says it'd be great if we could follow our favorite actors and directors so we could receive updates on their new films this is kind of the same one as getting notifications this one actually requires to have actors and directors have letterbox this is one that went viral and it's the exact same one that the other two i mentioned letterbox would be a lot cooler if we we're able to follow our favorite directors that way we can follow our favorite artists on spotify so we can get notifications on new projects such as posters trailers and casting as soon as they're announced but again this would require said actor said director to have one and i'm only aware of a couple of them that i'm following myself which is jim cummings martin scorsese recently joined ao is on letterbox Next says, Letterboxd should have a feature to show that you're currently watching a movie. I love this. This is like a don't disturb feature that you have on the iPhone. I absolutely agree. Don't bother this person. They're not on Letterboxd for watching a movie. Then just toss that phone and focus. Letterboxd needs a feature where you can connect contacts and see who in your contacts has an account. <laughs> this is a nice one. It's always what's your Instagram, what's your Twitter, what's your Snapchat. It's never what's your letterbox. Please add auto suggestions when typing misspelled movie titles. Yes, this this is a nice one and this is actually just one that could actually slip under the rug. It'd be funny if Letterboxd doesn't announce it and out of nowhere you're like, oh my goodness, it autocorrected for me because you'd have to go back and delete the entire word and then type it in all again. It doesn't autocorrect for you. And also auto suggestions helps that if you miss a certain word in the title, it's a big no-no. And I mean something as simple as the, which I get it. It's not the Citizen Kane, it's called Citizen Kane. But if someone's researching it and thought it was the Citizen Kane, then there's no harm, no foul and just putting, okay, they, they, they know that they mean Citizen Kane. We're improving technology nowadays to the point of it being extremely fucking dangerous. I think we can do something as simple as this that actually benefits society. You should add a button that you can press to say you saw the movie in theaters when you write your review. Absolutely. And which theater? Alamo Draft House, AMC, Cinemark, Arclight, Look Cinemas, Brain Dead Studios, the New Beverly, the list goes on. Letterboxd should have a feature where you log and rate the theaters you see the movies at. Not rate the theaters, you can do that on Yelp, there's already others, but logging in what theater you saw it at, great. Not gonna lie, you guys should improve on the comment feature under reviews, not as much discussion under reviews as there should be in my opinion. This connects with not having notifications whenever a comment is on your reviews. Yeah, not many people comment. I'm actually really surprised when a review, even a one-liner review has 36 comments. And last one, which is a funny honorable mention, is Letterbox Cinemas When. <laughs> and someone replied to this saying, I feel like that's just Alamo Draft House, LOL. I mean, that's a clever idea in theory, but I don't know if it's necessary. Watch me go if they ever do that though. So now for the feature they're planning on adding, it's like 95% certain. And as another suggestion, I screenshot it, this one says, hot take, but I think Letterboxd would just feature shows as well, like how they sometimes Sometimes have limited series or long episodes to log. I remember being happy that Defending Jacob was on there because I really wanted to write a review on Letterboxd. Having limited series on Letterboxd didn't bother me as it maybe did other people. I remember being happy that Defending Jacob was on there because I really wanted to write a review on Letterboxd. However, I'm not in the party. That TV show should be included. A TV show isn't a film. A film isn't a TV show. So separate it. Letterboxd is about film. And this is a big example of change not being a good thing. 
Sometimes change is a great thing, as we just discussed now. And then there's some changes you shouldn't touch. There's some things that should be left untouched. And this is one of them, but I guess they're rolling it out. And here we go. Here's two backdrops being the first thing they change. And as always, my letterbox is linked down below in the description. And that's all for today's video. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up, if you hate it, give it a thumbs down. If you like more thumbs up, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all next video.